Hello, it's Scott Manley here. Yeah, after a couple of days away, I came back to a news story that I have to talk about. Uh, basically, uh, in eastern California in Nevada County, there's a story that somebody's house burned down and uh, one of his dogs unfortunately died and they're blaming the fire on a meteorite. And before we get too far, I'm going to say this is almost certainly not what happened. So Friday night, there was a fairly big meteorite that was observed for hundreds of miles around. People all over Northern California and even into uh, Oregon were able to see this come down. And there was one group of people who were driving a car in, uh, you know, near the place, near Grass Valley, and they see the meteorite in front of them. They think, okay, it landed just over that hill there. Let's keep driving down the road and maybe we'll be able to find it because I hear that meteorites are worth a lot. I don't know. But they, they're driving down the road in the direction that they thought this thing impacted and they come across a house that is on fire. So naturally, they tell the owner and say, hey, we saw a meteorite coming towards you. You know, landed over here. Your house is on fire. Clearly, these two things are related. And it's kind of natural to think they might be related because... When we see meteorites, they are bright because they are burning up in the atmosphere. Burning means heat. Heat means fire. Surely a rock falling from the sky with such energy could start a fire on the earth. Um, well, that's almost certainly not what happened in this case. Because as I said, it was observed by people through Northern California and into Oregon. And there's a website run by the International Meteor Organization. And what one of the things they do is they compile all the observations, the images, the videos, and they use this to triangulate the trajectory of the meteorite. And this object did not come down over Nevada County. It ended up 170 miles away. In fact, it entered the atmosphere about 70 kilometers up over uh, Weed, California, Head is sort of westwards and probably landed just south of Etna, not too far away from, from that. But yeah, 170 mile difference. There is no way this thing that was observed is anything to do with this uh, fire that far away. Now, I, I think it's highly unlikely that a rock falling from the sky could actually cause a fire in a house, at least something that small, because when meteorites hit the atmosphere, most of the energy happens like 70 to 100 kilometers up. That's where most of the light and heat comes out. And then by the time something that makes it to the surface uh, has reached the surface, it's moving at, you know, subsonic speeds and it's cold. It doesn't have any incandescent uh, components. Now, if it was much larger, then yes, at a certain size, you end up with fragments that are large enough that they can make it all the way through and potentially could make a hole in there, could you know, not just make a hole in the ground, but also start a fire. So there would be an explosion and then potentially collateral fire, like a wildfire. Um, so the thing about meteorites is that because they burn up at such high altitudes, people on the ground have a really hard time figuring out just how far away they are. They'll see it come down and it'll maybe, maybe if they see it come down, it'll be like on the other side of some hills. And so it's natural to assume that it must have just landed on the other side of that hill, one valley over. But they're like seven, 800 kilometers up. These things can be seen for hundreds of miles around. And it's very unlikely if you see a meteorite coming down that it actually landed near you. Like, it's great if it did, but generally it doesn't. If you see a meteorite coming straight towards you, that's when there's a good chance that uh, you actually f may find a piece of rock nearby. So, you know, the meteorites have been known to come down and hit people and houses and personal property and cause damage. There's been a few cases. The most famous example, I think, is a peak scale meteorite in, like, New York. And it was seen by observers on the ground. It was tracked. It was kind of going very slowly. And uh, it ended up falling down, hitting the ground or hitting the surface at about 200 miles an hour. And it knocked a big hole in somebody's car. Nice big red car. The rear end was you know, damaged terribly. It missed the fuel tank so it didn't start a fire. Um, and yeah, the owner had bought the car for $300. They apparently sold the meteorite for $50,000 and sold the car to a collector who wanted a meteorite damaged car for $25,000. That is, uh, you know, not bad, I guess, right? Sometimes money really does fall from the sky. Uh, last year, 
there was a woman who was sleeping in her bed and a meteorite, again, fell from the sky, smashed through her roof and ended up in her bed. And it didn't start a fire because it was cold, but yes, she was very surprised to be woken up by a big hole in the ceiling and a rock in her bed. Not the kind of, you know, Dwayne Johnson rock, unfortunately. Oh, I don't know, maybe that's her thing. Uh, yeah, also earlier in the year, like, um, there was an auction and one of the things that sold was a doghouse that had a hole punched in its roof by a meteorite. So there is, you know, historic examples of chunks of rock that have fallen from the sky and you know, caused damage. But I don't think we've got any examples of a rock that started a fire. We have obviously Chelyabinsk where the blast wave from a much larger object shattered windows. I, I think you know that's kind of a... It's kind of an interesting data point because I think if you get to the size of something that would make it to the ground with enough heat to start a fire, it would also have enough energy to create quite a substantial blast uh, on the ground. Uh, another thing that it isn't, by the way, is Chinese rocket debris. Yeah, there's a, a lot of people throwing that conspiracy theory around because last week China launched the final module for their space station. And they launched it on the Long March 5, which is famously incapable of actually putting a second stage back on Earth in a place where it's not going to hit people. So that stage spun around the Earth for a few days and eventually deorbited over the Pacific Ocean. It might have broke up. I think it broke up in two parts and there were slightly different debris tracks for both sections. But most of the stuff ended up off the coast. And some of it may have made it to Mexico, if I remember correctly. Uh, so not only was this hundreds of miles south of where this event happened, it was also 12 hours prior, and that's kind of unlikely that uh, this debris would have taken that long to fall from the sky and finally land and ruin somebody's day and kill their dogs. It, it is unfortunate that, uh, yeah, we had uh, somebody lose their house and a dog, but I'm going to say... Don't tell the insurance company it was caused by a rock falling from the sky. You never know what kind of weird clauses you have in your insurance. It was probably something else. Like, uh, <laughs> I mean, to be clear, right, just because the rock that fell from the sky is cold, that doesn't mean it couldn't start a fire, right? If it hits a house, you've got electrical stuff, you've got uh, appliances, you've got gas, all sorts of things. When you hit them hard enough, they could start a fire. You know, when we've had earthquakes, you'll quite often see houses catch fire because things get knocked over, things get broken, and it just takes a spark. So the fact that you have a, a chunk of rock that's cold doesn't mean that it's impossible for it to start a fire. A wildfire, on the other hand, of course, would have to be something that required a much larger uh, chunk of rock. So anyway, yeah, um, that's the story. Sorry it wasn't a chunk of rock falling from the sky. Um, I hope your insurance will cover this. I'm Scott Manley. Fly safe.